My name is Jeff Corwin, and I come to you today as a wildlife biologist, a television presenter, a avid outdoorsman, and a father. I've seen firsthand the amazing efforts of the talented men and women who are on the front lines of our agencies of conservation fighting to save endangered species. Recovering endangered species from the brink of extinction and restoring their habitat is one of our nation's greatest success stories. Think of the symbol of our country, the bald eagle. In the 1970s, only 400 pair remained. Today, more than 20,000 pair survive. Every child in America today in the lower 48 can witness a wild bald eagle. Grizzly bears and gray wolves have returned to the Western Plains. Black-footed ferrets, once declared extinct, now thrive in the short grass prairie. All of this because of the Endangered Species Act. The black market trade of wildlife uh, is profound. It's a $20 billion a year industry. It seconds only to arms and drug trade. And the status of a creature, a species as endangered, doesn't change as it moves from one border to the next. Uh, we have the uh, CITES, uh, which we use to protect species internationally and various appendixes. And uh, a tiger is still critically endangered, whether it's in the United States or whether it's in another country. And we globally have a responsibility as stewards to ensure that these species have the best opportunity to survive. Thank you, sir. We yield back. So when an endangered species is recovered, it is not done alone on an island. It is with both private, state, and federal partners. As for keeping species that are internationally recognized as endangered, that has to remain constant. And we know, for example, just recently in France, in a zoo, uh, a rhino, one of the most critically endangered species on the planet, a white rhino, was actually poached in a zoo. Now, this gathered a tremendous amount of world attention because it is critically endangered and it is internationally recognized and protected under CITES. So we need to apply that with wildlife that is in the U.S. as well. Endangered species from other countries still should be afforded the protection here in the United States. As for the wolves, uh, while they are very polarizing, uh, we know for a fact that the restoration of wolves in the greater Yellow ecosystem, Yellowstone ecosystem, brought a, about a tremendous sense of balance. Uh, prior to the wolves, uh, after they were extirpated uh, since the end of the 19th century, uh, there was one pair of beaver in the entire uh, uh, Yellowstone National Park. With the recovery of the wolves, um, left. Uh, brought a, a management uh, of game to a cap carrying capacity. Uh, beavers came back because they had access to willow. Uh, that willow then created waterways and aqua systems that caused an increase in amphibians. So we can see how the restoration of endangered species can have a ripple effect as it plays its role as a keystone species. Right. Thank you. Uh, I remember filming the black-footed ferrets uh, almost 20 years ago, and it was not doing well. But one of the critical partners in the restoration of the black-footed ferret was the Denver Zoo. Yep. And uh, the uh, state of Colorado is a huge partner. I believe states are partners with uh, the federal government in managing the species. But we know for a fact when they are restored, there is great benefit. Look at the state of Florida, the recovery of the critically endangered alligator. We now know that this is a keystone species, and with the recovery of this species, uh, we see healthier waterways, we see good uh, prey abundance for predators. So um, there is a tremendous benefit to the restoration of these species, both an aesthetic, recreational, and economic benefit, and I think both the state and federal folks serve as partners together. In, in fact, you can look to one of the first uh, creatures to be recognized for national conservation. It was the heath hen. And it's a great example of when we sit back and we think a, a job is done that you can have calamity. The heath hen uh, was recovered and, and began to appear on the heaths of the various islands off the coast of New England. And it had almost disappeared. The numbers exploded to over 2,000 animals. And they called it the heath hen because everyone would gather together and watch them uh, in their little breeding legs. And there was one very famous one named Booming Ben. Well, a couple of bad winners, um, some feral cats and dogs, and one day there was only one heath hen left. It was Booming Ben. And every day he would come out and boom. And then one day 
it was quiet, and that was the end of the, uh, the Heath end. So I think it is incredibly important that we uh, recognize the value of this policy and also recognize that historically the ESA was not politically based. Remember, it was produced in an administration that had tremendous challenges, and if it wasn't for Richard Nixon and his policies, we would not have bald eagles today. So um, I think what is unique about Americans is we recognize the value of our natural resources. We celebrate the, our, the value of natural resources, going back to Teddy Roosevelt, John Muir, through the work of Rachel Carson. And today, um, we as Americans are unique, and we have such a splendid uh, tableau of valuable species and landscapes. And it can only stay through wise, pragmatic, common sense management. And I believe. The ESA is a big partner in that.